Good morning, flock. Ariel over here at Finest, where it is a beautiful sunny morning. Blinding sun coming just over the trees there. And I want to do a look at what's going on in the garden. The last time you saw it, it was all under frost covers. We did not actually get a frost that night. It was in the 30s, and I like to keep things covered when it is, um, just in case it gets colder than they're planning and so that uh, everything stays just a little warmer because most veggies are happier being warmer than 30 degrees. So let's take a look at what's going on. This carrot patch is thriving. I've got various kinds of carrots here. It's hard to tell because they're mostly underground and they're not quite big enough to pull out, but that's a purple carrot. You can kind of see the base of the leaves looks more purplish compared to the base of the leaves on these guys are more green the whole way down. If I remember right, those are an orange carrot and or maybe a yellow carrot, and these are an orange carrot, I forget. I have to look at my garden map. I've got chard here. Um, I've picked a lot of that so it looks a little sparse. I just keep cutting off leaves like you can see around the bottom there, and it keeps growing. Then more chard that was planted a little later. Beets, those are golden beets. They'll be, some of those should be ready to pick as baby beets shortly. Onions are doing well. It's a random beet couple beet seeds that got over there on their own. Radishes, a few are starting to go to seed, which is okay. I've also picked a bunch out of there. And um, when they go to seed, the flowers are pretty and the bees and stuff like them. And they'll make a seed pod, which is also edible. I'll show you that after a little while. So if they can just, if some want to go to seed, they can. It's been getting pretty hot here despite our frost uh, threats at times. It's been in the 80s a few days too. Sometimes we have whole summers that don't get into the 80s, but this year it has been. And so, um, yeah, that makes some things like radishes like cooler temperature bolt. Then I've got leeks, which are doing well. They're a slow growing thing. I could start eating some of them, but I'll let them get a little bigger. Broccoli, I've actually cut all of my broccoli. None of the big heads are on there anymore. But when you cut the big heads and then leave the plants, they start growing see if the shadow will let you see there. You start growing those little side shoots. They're never as big as the big head, but you do get some more broccoli. So I'm just letting them grow. Then I've got more white onions, more cabbages. These are making a pretty good head. That's feeling nice and firm and big. Some years I've only ever gotten a head that big by fall, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. That'll make some great sauerkraut. I'll probably wish I had more, um, but, and eat, I like cabbage in lots of ways. Then I've got kale, which is doing well. Again, I've got multiple varieties. Eat lots and lots of colors because it's fun and it's pretty and it's good for you. This one's got kind of a purpley vein in it, you can see. Then I've got, a, this is called, I think, Russian blue, but it looks green. And then this is a more of a fully purple leaf, still with some green in there. The cauliflower is doing well. I've picked several heads and not some of the others. Got a pine needle that fell in there. Gets a little bit of a, a purpley tint in between the leaves. That's ready to pick, so I'll probably cut that one today. And some are a little bit smaller like that guy. Then I have lots more red beets of various kinds, which is great. I love beets in multiple ways. You guys will see various recipes from me with them. Then we get to the sad parts. This was more kale. You can see there's only two left. That was the voles. This was a nice solid bed of, char of collards. They've eaten most of them, more than half of them. They've eaten some holes in this patch of carrots. I grow a lot of carrots because I like them. So this is more varieties from the first bed. They started in on, they completely finished it. These are uh, Brussels sprouts, which are slow growing. Their little sprouts are just starting to grow along there, but there was another one, big one, every bit as tall as those guys, right in that hole, and they ate that last night. Um, this is my pea bed, where you can't really see any peas. I was wrong, they didn't eat quite everyone. This one lonely guy is clear up over the top of the trellis, and if you remember the photos of how all the peas had sprouted so beautifully earlier in the year, every single pea should be that tall. This bed should be solid green, and instead, it is almost all bare dirt. So that wet bed is sad. I don't know if I should try to replant something. I probably don't have enough time to get anything else to grow this season, um, so I'm going to try to not worry about it. I've got more carrots along here. I've got various zucchini and summer squashes in the middle and a few more beets on the other side. 
But these are looking good. I haven't seen a flower yet, though some are getting big enough that I think some of those might be buds down in there. So I might start seeing some production there soon. There's various varieties growing in here. They seem pretty happy. My potatoes overall are looking great. Um, the ones on this end are a little smaller. They got frost bit that one, uh, one real cold thing. It actually took them almost to the ground when they were smaller because uh, the cover blew off on that end. And you can still see a few, you know, like there was a burnt leaf that was from the frost earlier. But these guys grew out of it. I wasn't sure if they were going to survive at all, but they have. They're not as tall as some of the other potatoes, but I also have three varieties here. So the, the middle ones are taller because they're a different kind. But overall, the potatoes are looking great from above ground. Probably the best looking potato plants I've ever had. So in a little bit, we'll have to see what's going on underground. And then over here, I've got lots of lettuces of various kinds. You can see all the pretty colors. I've got some uh, cucumbers in the middle there. They're not doing very well, and I do like cucumbers. I might go see if any of the local greenhouses have any leftover bigger plants or not, but I've had voles in here too, and that might be part of their problem. Some of them are gone. They've eaten through some of the lettuces in various spots, and they've eaten about half of my garlic, which is very sad because I could eat an entire bed full of garlic, no problem. So I might still get some, but it's not going to be nearly enough. Then the beans are looking for here overall pretty well. They uh, don't, they really like it a little warmer than here, but that hole in the middle is again caused by the voles. And then I've got some more. This is Vulcan red chard. Got some more kales, um, more onions, and the rhubarb patch is starting to die back a little bit. The horseradish looks good. The asparagus looks pretty good. It's just growing there. And I actually, oh, I might even have one ready to pick. I doubled up on my, my bird netting here because my first strawberry that tried to turn red, a robin hopped under the edge of this and ate the red half off of it. But I see a red strawberry there. I think it's still a little pink on the backside. I see one through the leaves there and at least one down in there. If I actually get a strawberry this year, it's going to be the first strawberry for my uh, strawberry patch that I ever got to eat. Just looking back at the house into the sun. So a couple other things about the garden. Lots of people ask me, what in the world are you going to do with all of that food? Which is funny to me because I don't ever feel like I have nearly enough. I like food. I like to cook. I cook for other people. And while well, I'm certainly not a... Uh, veggie only diet person I do love vegetables and I eat lots and lots of them so I fully intend to eat every single thing in this garden the vast majority of it fresh like I could have I could have a full bed of of just cabbage I, I've already eaten almost all my broccoli I could have 50 more broccoli plants um, like I said I could you know if I had peas even I could use two beds them I could probably eat through three or four full beds of potatoes in a year not just one I could handle a full bed of garlic and so on um, and when I have enough of some things I do like to pickle carrots and pickle beets and dry onions and garlic and potatoes to use through the winter and make sauerkraut and things like that so using it is not a problem getting enough is and what I am trying to figure out is what's my best solution to the vole problem. Just got distracted by a squirrel, for real, running in the woods. Um, because most things are doing really well this year. I definitely have resolved my problem with having uh, poisoned hay in my garden. Everything is is thriving, um, growing beautifully. I do just love looking at it. It has suddenly gotten hot and dry after all that rain we have, so I have had some of my sprinklers guys uh, ran them last night to, to soak the dirt because it was dry several inches down, so now it's nice and wet on top again. Um, and that I'm, I'm going to do another video about where that water's coming from, so check back for that. Um, <clears throat> But the voles. I've, I've tried traps of varying kinds, live and dead, and above ground and below ground. I've tried various poisons. I've tried various deterrents. 
There are some more that I could try, but one of my closest neighbors with a garden who I help has a similar problem and she does have the little whirly gigs, the big whirly gigs, the um, or little windmills, whatever you call them. The um, she's got a whole ton of those solar uh, vibrator thing sticks. I forget what they're called that you stick in the ground that are supposed to deter them. She's got enough to cover an area about six times larger, according to their specifications, than what her garden actually is, um, and. While she may have less voles than she would otherwise, she still has them. And so I know they don't, well, they <clears throat> seem to help some people in some places um, reduce the voles somewhat. It's certainly not 100% foolproof. And if I was going to buy all of that, that would, that would be a fairly serious investment. And I have no guarantee that it would still keep them all out. Um, yes, cats are a great idea if you're new around here. Um, I did have cats for a while. Cats, I have learned, cannot survive the wildlife in this area, and so I have no cats anymore, and now I have voles. I did not have voles for the one summer I was able to have cats here. Um, they slaughtered an amazing amount of small rodents. Um, so that's not really a good option for me right now. And so what I'm thinking is usually a bad idea to tell an audience what you're thinking when you're not sure and haven't done it yet. But I think I might just invest in concrete block beds. In the future, when I'm in a more permanent location on my own place, I for sure want to do concrete uh, block or cement block raised beds. And I'd like to actually make them like this high because at some point I'm not going to be young. I'll be old and it would just uh, be much easier to, to work on a, a higher bed as far as not having to bend over, it'd be easier to weed, easier to care for, you could even sit on the edge of it to work in your garden bed, and so on. But I didn't want to put that much um, effort and money into infrastructure here where I know I'm going to pick up and leave. So what I'm thinking I might do, because by the time I buy whirly gigs and all these various deterrents that might, might help reduce them, I think I'd have as much money in as if I bought enough concrete block to do just a single block layer high raised bed instead of going up, you know, like two or three layers high like I'd like to do eventually. So I'm debating that this fall I might get blocks and actually build single block high raised beds with a good solid hardware cloth underneath. I would be able to move the blocks later, I just, you know, obviously concrete's heavy so that will be some work to move later, but um, I think that might be my best option because then I am pretty close to 100% sure they can't get in. The hardware cloth might be might be a, a loss by the time, you know, I have to go to move the beds in a couple years, but at least the blocks I should be able to reuse. And I would still have to figure out a good source. I don't want cinder blocks with um, fly ash in them that can both leach into the garden. And over enough time being wet, I'm told by a, a friend who does construction, they can get a little soggy. They're not really made to be soaked all the time. So I want actual concrete blocks, which are heavier and more expensive, and they're made out of um, cement aggregate and water, I believe. Uh, and I'd have to find a good source for that, because if I want to make beds the size of my current ones, which I do, because if anything I could use more space, not less, um, I'd need at least, I think, 340 blocks, and they're pretty heavy. So that, that's going to be a serious investment. I've got to decide if I, if I want to actually do that, but I'm probably going to be here for a couple years. I do want a garden. I care very much about it, both because I enjoy it and because I really value the food I get from it. And it is discouraging to have everything growing really well and be managing the, the moisture when it doesn't rain and be able to manage the cold when it's too cold and then watch little tiny furry things just eat everything you've grown. Um, so that's kind of my plan, that maybe by this fall, it, I can't really do anything right now because everything's growing. Just keep my fingers crossed that they don't eat every other thing before the end of the year. And then this fall, once I'm pulling veggies out, actually uh, install a, a foolproof bed, um, which would be handy to have for a lot of things. I just, like I said, I didn't didn't really want to go to that um, that investment here where I know I'm going to have to move it. but. I think it might be worth it for me to be able to grow food for the next couple of years. So I've got to do a little bit more thinking of that and figuring out where to source actual cement blocks. Um, 
I do have access to borrowing a trailer to get them here, but I think they weigh close to, when you get the actual cement ones, close to 50 pounds a piece, and if I need 340 of them, that is a good bit of weight. So I'm going to have to do some, some figuring on, on making that possible. So hopefully right now I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed that the um, voles don't eat everything and that maybe some of my friendly foxes or uh, pine martens or owls or anything else that eats small rodents comes by and destroys at least part of their population. If I uh, lived in an area where black snakes lived, I would love one. I've even thought about trying to ask somebody who lives where black snakes do live. They can't survive here because it's too cold in the winter. The only snakes we have are very small garter snakes. There's no toxic snakes, no other snakes in the area. It's just too cold. But I thought about seeing if somebody would would send me a black snake for the summer that I could let loose down one of those vole holes um, and have that do them in, even though I know the snake wouldn't be able to stay here in the winter. But I don't know where to find a black snake. Um, and I don't know what else to do about it. So I, I think I'm going to end up doing the, the concrete block and, and wire underneath beds. And yeah, if anyone's got a great source for an inexpensive place in a remote mountain area, because obviously you're not just gonna ship stuff that heavy from forever far away to, to get a, a pile of cement blocks like that, let me know. Because I've so far managed the big wildlife, I've got a fence up that, that keeps all my deer and moose and elk and everything out. It works great. I had a big moose walk by there the other day. I saw a young bull walk up by this side of the fence. I saw some deer come up to the back of the fence and look at it and go on their way. So I'm able to manage the big wildlife. I'm able to somewhat manage the weather with, you know, adding water and covering things. But man, these little guys are just destroying things. So that's the current garden update. Um, not to be all discouraging. That is my biggest frustration at the moment, but I'm also super excited that other than the things that are getting eaten, everything is growing exceedingly well and thriving, and I have picked tons of greens. I'll have to do a video. I've made multiple kinds of salads out of here because I've been picking the lettuces and the chards and the kale, and like I said, eating broccoli and cauliflower, and I'm probably gonna make a big salad for lunch today. We'll see if I have time to make a video of that, and so on. So that's what's going on around my garden. Hopefully you all's gardens are growing at least as well and have a few less small rodents in them. Thanks for watching, folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.